praise Yahweh. We welcome the viewers, those that are viewing at this time. You're so welcome. We thank you for joining us in the name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. It's Youth Day, and we're excited about Youth Day. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give our youth a hand. Hallelujah. 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 For those that you see and those that are coming, we just magnify his name. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, we introduce unto you our anointed speaker. Our speaker for the hour is a man that loves the Lord. Hallelujah. He's been in the ministry for quite some time. He's actually grown up in the ministry, and we thank Yahweh for that. We thank Yahweh that he's anointed by Yahweh. He's worked with our musical um, team, with our musicians, and um, he's a great teacher. He's a great teacher. He's, and he has such a teachable spirit. And that's something that's very valuable in the days and times now because some people, you can't tell them nothing. But he has a teachable spirit. So I thank Yahweh for him. I thank him for coming forth in his very own way. Let's put your hands together for Brother Aaron Cornish. say that God has been faithful would be an understatement. Yeah. I'm so thankful for his mercy. I'm so thankful for his grace. Uh, I'm so thankful that my decisions didn't scare away his grace. My decision making didn't scare away his mercy. My lifestyle didn't intimidate him. He's not scared of my past. He's not afraid of my future. He's not afraid of my imperfections. And I'm so grateful to that on this morning. Amen. 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 Giving honor to the apostles. Give you all the praise. To the fivefold, to all of you guys that are here this morning. I'm so grateful. Uh, start off with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this atmosphere that you've saturated already. Father, I thank you for your all-consuming presence, for your presence already being here with us. I thank you, Father, that it's not nothing we have to muster up. It's not nothing we have to invite, Father. But you said we'll enter into your gates with thanksgiving, enter into your courts with praise. We thank you unto you and bless his name. So, Father, we honor that scripture, Father, and we understand that, Father, that scripture is an acknowledgment of our already current presence. It's an, all, it's an acknowledgment of our already current anointing. It is nothing we have to muster. We don't have to sing songs the right way. We don't have to play the correct way. All your actions come in with a certain posture of thanksgiving and holiness and with thanksgiving in our hearts, Father. You said when two or three are gathered in the midst, Father, you therefore say you will be in the midst of us. So, Father, we are thankful for that. We give you honor. We give you glory on this morning. Father, I pray that this word that, that goes forth, Father, it hits every soft heart and not a stony heart, Father, that is received with gladness, Father, and it's taken up from the out. From the inside of the church onto the outside into the streets in our workplaces and our jobs in Yeshua's name. We thank you for every ear, every ear, every ear that is listening, Father. We pray that it is received in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Quick story. Uh, I'll just start off with a story. I was preparing for this word about a year ago or so. God gave me this word to get uh, to speak uh, before the last one. And while trying to come up with scenarios and trying to come up with things to say uh, concerning God, gave me an example uh, to go off of. I've had several jobs in life. Uh, I'm not proud of it in any kind of way, but if I can't do anything right, I can get a job. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to disclose how many jobs. I have. It's been a lot in my very young age. And while getting these jobs in, getting hired on to these um, to pretty good companies, I realized that getting a job isn't that hard to do. 
it's not that difficult. Depending on your situation, I mean, if you can nail an interview, if you can get your resume right, you can get a job pretty easily, uh, depending on, like I said, your circumstance. And I know with me in particular, I, I'm grateful to um, have the ability to get a job. Um, and so the Holy Spirit um, let me know that getting a job is easy. You just have to nail an interview, go through proper protocol, uh, dress the right way, and you have it. But I learned that getting a job is one thing, but actually performing a job is an entirely different yeah, thing. That's good. Good. You can get a job, mm -hmm. but performing a job can be a different thing because there are certain skill sets you have to develop. Mm -hmm. There's a certain etiquette you have to abide by. There are certain rules you have to follow with every job that you get. No job is the same. So while, you know, while getting these jobs and nailing these jobs, I realized that, okay, I got the job, but doing it isn't always the easiest thing, especially doing something that I've never done before. Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily lie on a resume one time, but I told them that I knew how to drive a forklift. And at the time, I didn't, or, or I didn't yet. But I told them that I could, and literally my first day, they threw me up on, on a stand, they call it a stand-up jack. Two to three stories high going, going, <laughs> going up. Corners, you, can, you say you can ride a forklift, right? Yeah. I <laughs> So they strapped me up and put me on that thing. We need you to get certain boxes by this certain time, and we need you to produce these kind of numbers. I'm like, God, I've never done this before. I figured it out. But I realized that getting the job was the easy part, but actually doing it, performing it, and learning new things wasn't the easiest thing. And so the Holy Spirit let me know, same with our salvation. Mm -hmm. Anybody can be saved. That's right. Yeah, it's literally one, two, three, A, B, C. Anybody can be saved. Anybody can receive salvation. Mm -hmm. You literally had to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Yeshua raised from the dead and, was, and died. Died on the third day and was raised on the third day. That's it. Anybody can be saved. You don't have to bet on your, no matter your background, your upbringing, your size, your color. You can be saved. Doesn't matter who you are. But getting saved is the easy part. Actually receiving the Holy Spirit and living this walk is an entirely different thing. Same as with getting a job. You can get the job, but doing the jo having and mastering the job description is one thing. Getting saved and actually living the walk is, are two entirely different things. And this is what the Holy Spirit led me to, te um, to teach on this morning. Salvation solidifies our place in the heavenly realm. But the Holy Spirit is what gives us fruit and what gives us power for the earthly realm. I can get saved here, and my place in heaven has already been made, has already been set in stone. But the Holy Spirit has been given to us in this realm to help me walk this walk. There's a job, and there's a job description. I'm hired. Now let me show you how to do the job. You're saved. Now let me show you how to live. So this is what the Holy Spirit has led me to teach. I'm turning. You don't have to turn with me. I'm turning to Matthew chapter 3. Verse 8, I'm reading from the Amplified. The fruit indicating an inner righteousness. I've been saved now. The apostle had a word on a couple of months ago that stuck with me. It was a piece of it at the tail end. Being saved, there should be fruit connected to your repentance. It's not enough just to be saved. It's good. It's a great start. But there has to be fruit to follow. There has to be evidence of your salvation. Yeah, I'm saved, but I got a walk to live. I got a life to live after that. It's great that you saved. It's great that you've received salvation. Now you need a guide. You need conviction. You need a compass. God, I've been introduced to this life. Now I need to know how to live. Matthew, cha Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. So produce fruit that, cons that consists with repentance. I'm reading for the Amplified. Demonstrating new behavior that proves a change of heart and a conscious decision to turn away from sin. I'm going to Matthew 5, chapter 13. I'm going to go through these verses, guys. Being up here, it's like a game of taboo. You got to hurry up and get your points across before the time runs out. 
Let's see, 513. Yeah. The believers are salt and light. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. My sermon topic on this morning is evidence. Evidence. Evidence beyond the pew. Beyond the church. And the first thing when we think of evidence of the Holy Spirit, we automatically go to the technologies of the Spirit. We automatically go to the tongues and to... Uh, like I said, the spiritual technologies and warfare. And these things are a part of our walk with Christ. God has given us these things to further accelerate the kingdom, to further edify the body of Christ. These things are very important. I would never take away from the gift of speaking in tongues and gift of interpretation. I would never take away from the gifts of healing and the gifts of faith and wisdom and knowledge and teaching. These are great gifts. But there is an evidence that goes past just the sanctuary. These gifts are great in church and also great outside the doors. But there's another sort of evidence to exude outside of these things that boils down to our interaction with and our treatment of people. Because I don't want to be able to prophesy, but I can't forgive. I don't want to have a rhema word, but I cannot hold a conversation. I can't prophesy if I can't admit when I'm wrong. God, fix my lips to ask for forgiveness before you give me a prophetic word. I'm out of order. I have an art with you, and I won't address it. I'm ignoring it, but I come up here and I'm speaking. I'm prophesying. I got all these, I'm laying hands, but won't pick up a phone. Won't send a text. It's the every day that God wants us to get right. We got Saturday service down pat. We got Sunday morning down to a science. But it's the every day where we trip up. I can't control my anger. I, I don't have self-control. I snap at the moment somebody says something wrong to me. But Sunday morning, I, I'm ready for a word. I'm all oiled up, and I'm, I prayed. I fasted. <laughs> we have the stuff down. We have the technologies down to a science. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else, the treats and the toys and the good stuff will come after that. And this is going to sound very fundamental. This is very elementary, very basic, but... Before we go any further within the spiritual realm, this is where we miss heaven. Not for prophesying inaccurately, but for not forgiving. You will miss heaven faster off of an inaccurate prophecy than you will not admitting when you were wrong. You will miss heaven faster. This is where we get judged. I'm grateful for your gift, son. I'm grateful that you prophesied in my name. I'm grateful that you had a rhema word. But did you forgive your father? Did you forgive your mother? Did you forgive your brother? Did you ask for forgiveness? Did you admit when you were wrong? Am I making sense? And this, in the body of Christ, this is where we kind of trip up. And we get excited about the toys and the technologies and uh, being super deep and super anointed to do the great things. And we trip up on the groundwork, the basics. It's the groundwork God wants us to get right. The same spirit that allows me to operate in the supernatural on a supernatural level is the same spirit that should cause me to live righteously for the, in the every day. Not just in this sanctuary, but when I go to work. Some of us, when I get in my car, when I go home. Some of us don't have to go very far for the spirit of God in our lives to be tested, to be tried. So God has given me tips and things to for us to pay attention to, to help us live this walk outside of 
the spiritual technologies. Like I said, I don't want to be misunderstood. I'm all for the this, this spiritual aspects of righteous living. All the spiritual, the gifts of prophecy and the gift of interpretation of tongues. I'm all for these things. But God wants us to get it right on a standard level before anything else. And a lot of, for, name anybody in here, but for some of us, we, we kind of trip up, I myself. God, I don't want to prophesy. And I still got all in my heart. I still got phone calls I need to make, man. I don't want to be redundant, but you understand what I'm trying to say, I hope. God wants to be represented beyond, beyond just the inside of his church. Most of the ed- evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives will be exuded, not inside of a church, but in our interaction and with our treatment of people. And this is where God uh, has led me to teach on today. So where do we exude this fruit of the Holy Spirit, if not just in the spiritual gifts? The first point I want to make is in our communication. Evidence of the Holy Spirit by ways of communication. What I say, what comes out of my mouth, what I don't say, what I do not say. Communication is a huge part of our walk, of our walk with Christ. God is a stickler for communication, even more so than he's a stickler for anything else. The world was created off of communication by words. God literally spoke into Ibnis, and he said, let there be, and there was, communication. God didn't lay hands on Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth, and Lazarus revealed himself. He didn't lay hands on him. He didn't smother him with oil. Lazarus, come forth, and Lazarus came to be. Communication, talking. How many of us know how to talk? Can you talk? You can pray. You can lay hands. Can you hold a conversation? And for a lot of us, it's a very difficult thing to do. A lot of, for some of us, prophecy comes easier than admitting when we're wrong. Laying hands comes easier than making that phone call. Hey, man, about 10 years ago, about that thing you did five years ago. Hey, man, what was that about? This is where we get saved. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimonies. I don't want us to overthink that scripture. The words of our testimony, that's a conversation. This is how we overcome by the blood of the lamb and say, hey, man, this is how I overcame such and such. This is how I deal with anxiety. This is how I do. This is how I I, I deal with anger, whatever it is you might be going through. You could be holding up somebody else's freedom because you refuse to be transparent about where you are. It isn't that your deliverance can't may not necessarily be at the altar. It may may not necessarily be in a bottle of oil. But just a lunch, hey, man, let's talk about such and such. This is how we overcome. It's an open book test. You're starving yourself. But fasting, we love to fast. But (laughs) you starve yourself. You're reading every chapter in the the page of the book. You're cutting in the Saturday brunch, being at the altar all morning. When you could just have a conversation about how, how did you overcome this? How did you do this? easy but our culture and where we come from we're taught man don't put your don't put your business out there don't be transparent like that and we put ourselves in this bondage in this cage in the slavery of sin because we refuse to be transparent i can't get a breakthrough because you sitting on a testimony because you won't talk to me I've literally have, me personally, I've had life-changing experience just through a matter of conversation. I'm not the same man just by having to talk with the right person about the right thing. And so this is how, and this is how, this is how we keep ourselves in, in bondage. I don't want to get too far ahead. We overcome by the blood of the land and word of our testimony through communication, through talking with each other. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. Whatever is on your heart is going to come out of your mouth. We're still talking about communication, how to communicate with the people of Christ. Out of the abundance of the heart, there's no such thing as saying things you do not mean. Lie. That is a myth. Everything that comes out of your mouth, you mean it because it's on your heart. There's no such, you may not want, there's a difference between not wanting to say it and not meaning to say it. 
No, you meant it. I tell people all the time, I don't say anything I don't mean. No, I may not have wanted to say it, but I meant every word of it. Whether it was good, whether it's bad, it's on your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your mouth is only going to talk about what, the, what is your heart is full of. The Bible says, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. The word guard means to monitor. That word guard means to monitor. Pay attention to. Pay attention to what comes at what goes into your heart, because it's going to come out of your mouth. If your mouth full, is full, if your heart is full of negativity, negativity is going to come out. If your heart is filled with anger, anger will rage will spew from your lips. I can promise you that. Unaddressed bitterness, stuff you've been sitting on for ten years on in it will come out in your everyday speech it doesn't it, some things don't take a whole lot of discernment and tapping into the spirit you can just listen to a person figure out where they are i ain't got to go in my discernment bag on you man i'm just listening to you the bible says be swift to listen and slow to speak that should be a spiritual gift honestly listening because some people I'm sorry. It was muted the whole time. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. So I wasn't being picked up. Whew. All right. Anyway, where are we at? The abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. So this is, we're paying attention to what we say. Ephesians 4, 29 through 30. Let no co corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good and you to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So we, and we know gossiping, cursing, insults, coming at your mouth the wrong way. We've been dealing with this, I believe, for a little, a little minute. I ain't got to talk too much about gossiping, man. Can we, come on, man. Just, if you're not going to contribute to a situation, just don't say anything about it, I guess. You know, it's, I don't know. The Bible tells us not to think too highly of ourselves than what we ought to. You got to mean You got to be reasonable about who you are. You got to be reasonable about your skill sets. You got to be reasonable about where you are in God. This will keep you from talking about the next man. In the, it, in the area, you might be talking about them, man. You might got them in that area, but there are seven other areas they got you beat in. And you're talking about that one that they don't do right. Meanwhile, it, well, I ain't about to go into that, but don't gossip, man. It's, and I, it can be difficult. It can be hard, especially if something's really good. You just got to hear it or whatever. Get your ears. You say, hey, man, like a Paul said, hey, man, I ain't trying to look. It, it sounds good. I ain't trying to hear that right now, though. <laughs> you got to watch it. Cussing, don't, you know, try not to curse. You know, don't, don't go, go around cussing anybody out. You ever heard somebody cussing? You know they didn't grow up cussing. They got, you know, they got their parents are pastors and they're part of the clergy. And when they cuss, it just, it's just not landed. Forget that it's a sin. <laughs> it don't even sound right coming from. <laughs> you got the prefix in front of the, your place is just all wrong. <laughs> you don't even cuss right. Just also don't cuss. You might go to hell for nothing. <laughs> It don't even sound right coming from you. Chill. <laughs> Watch what you say. <laughs> Pay attention to what comes out of your mouth. I'm not going to spend too long on communication. Uh, I'm running out of time. Communication is important, good and bad. Say things that are uplifting. Compliment each other. Mean it. 
Say, I'm sorry, and mean it. Don't just say it because it's in the book. You got to be sincere. My mom grew up tells her, you ain't got nothing nice to say. Don't say anything at all. And now I got to work on that because it, what comes out of my mouth been transferred to my face, and I got to work on these facial expressions. <laughs> I need deliverance. <laughs> If I, my mouth doesn't say it, my eyebrows will. <laughs> Communication is important. My next point, fruit and conduct. We talked about the, uh, the results of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives beyond just the spiritual technologies. We talked about what it sounds like. This is what now we're talking about what it looks like, our conduct. Um, oops. We're talking about conduct. How we treat each other. I got in parentheses up here, light. We talk about being the salt in the light. We talk about our words. I, I want my words to be edifying like salt. I want it to be seasoned. I want it to be tasteful. I want my conduct to look right. I want my light to exude. Salvation should look a certain way. There's a certain way that we should behave. It's more than just what we say, but we have to act this thing up. Certain places I can't go, certain things I can't do. It's not that I think I'm better or anything like that. It's just, man, I'm living another life. I don't think I'm better than you. And actually, you can join me. A lot of times, you know, we'll hang around people and we'll live a certain kind of way. And because they are intimidated, because they feel that like they can't live up to that, they'll try to downplay and water down what you're doing to kind of get you to stay on their level. And I'm like, man, I, I'm not trying to, you know, stun on you. I'm not trying to get in my bag on you. Man, you can live this walk with me. It's available to you. But one thing we know, this life is available to everybody. It's, everybody's just not going to do it. It's built for everybody, but it's not, everybody's just not going to cut it. So fruit in our conduct. We're back to the gifts of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, peace, kindness, patience, goodness long-suffering and self-control. Are we patient? Are we long-suffering? Are we humble? Do we have self-control? Self-control is, is the last thing listed on that list, but self-control is one of the most pivotal and most paramount fruit of the Spirit. Self-control is important. It is so important, and we sleep on it, but self-control can be the difference between you being delivered and you remaining in bondage. I'm a huge believer that the, the deliverance journey and the deliverance walk, just as much as it is supernatural, is disciplinary action. It's a, it's a, that's where self-control is another word for discipline. You got to set yourself up to be delivered. It's one thing to come up for deliverance at the altar, but when you go out in the street, there you have to refrain from. There's a, there's a discipline walk that comes with it, not just supernatural. And I don't, I don't want us to over-spiritualize being delivered because it, sometimes we'll come up for prayer and it, it just stays there. We're back to remaining in the same patterns that we used to do. But deliver, being delivered and receiving deliverance means that I have to make room for it. The anointing is there. I just have to clear the way. I might have to delete a certain, a certain amount of people on social media. I may have to change my content. I may have to miss this season of power, <laughs> this, this, this go around. <laughs> okay. I may have to change my news feed. I can't go to this anymore. I'm trying to live a new way. I'm trying to walk a new walk. I got to set myself up to win. I can't come up for prayer and remain in the same patterns. Things have to change. Because at that point, what was all of this for? I've drooled and slobbered, and my clothes are greased up, only for me to go right back out and remain in the same place. What was it all for? It's called church theatrics. It wasn't real. Because if it was, you would go out and you would live it and make room for it. This is why I uh, don't take this the wrong way. It's not that I don't pay attention. I definitely believe in supernatural encounters. 
But I don't want us to get so caught up in the glory in the glory cloud and the smoke and the thunder and the lightning that we miss the practical measures to be in the, to remain in the face of God. Serving God is in the practical measures more than anything else. The supernatural encounters of the of the synagogue of the church of the temple are great, very useful. But it is worth it. It means absolutely nothing if I'm not doing the groundwork. I don't want to lose time. The groundwork is important. So we're talking about conduct. The Bible says, love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that spitefully use you. See past the offense. I give up my right to retaliate. I give up my right to be offended. I forfeit my right to be mad. Even when I am wronged, when I have been done wrong, I'm still apologizing. I'm meaning it. I'm not treating you right just because you do me right. You could do me wrong. I'm still going to do you right. I'm going to choose you first each and every time. It's not popular. It sounds stupid. It sounds foolish. You know, on social media, we're, we're, we're taught an entirely different doctrine. Choose those to choose you. And to them, it makes sense. And I get it. I understand it. But that stems from a place of fear and a place of arrogance and pride. The Bible says, love, love your enemies. I love you anyway. You may not like me. You might pick on me. You might bully me. But I'm going to choose you every time. I'm not making it about me because your issue with me has nothing to do with me. And if we want to operate in the spirit, you want to look at, you want to see through the lens of the offense. You want to see through the lens of, the, through, right through the insults. Yeah, I see you saying this, but this is what your heart is really saying. I see the insecurities that are stemming from it. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. It's difficult. You caught me on a bad day. But let's talk about it instead. Let me take you out to lunch. I'm not about to, you may not remember a Bible scripture I tell you. You may, not, you may not even remember Yeshua's name, but you're going to remember my encounter. And that could be just enough to get somebody. Right. Man, I don't remember that scripture that he said. He said, do it around you, whatever. He said, I don't remember the Yeshua guy, but I remember how he treated me. I remember he didn't retaliate back. What kind of God does he serve? I remember being at work. And uh, this was back when I used to work at a mission. I used to work with some... Really old guys. They, these guys had to be literally three times my age, if, if, you know, or older, or whatever. And I, I would find them saying they would they would cuss and everything like that, or whatever. And they, and they would come around. They would cuss. They would say certain things. I'm here. Excuse me. I'm sorry for cussing. I'm sorry for saying such and such. I'm like, what are you apologizing to me for? I'm a kid. You you grown. You do it. Say what you want to say. But I realized it and it had nothing to do with what I said or. Me talking about God, it's just the way I carried myself and conducted myself. It was the glory of, it was the glory of God that they saw upon me. It had nothing to do with my good works and nothing that I did correctly. The Bible says, I believe, it's in Exodus or Deuteronomy when Moses went up to Mount Sinai. Stayed there for 40 days and for 40 nights, seeking God for the, for the new law for the Israelites. And the Bible says that when he came down, he didn't say anything. And when they saw him, they could tell that he had been with God. There was such a glow on his skin and in his beard. They could tell that he, surely he had been with Yahweh. He hadn't said a word yet. He was just walking, being, exuding a light, not saying a word. You should enter into a place. You should enter into a room. People should know you have been with God, even if they cannot identify it. Even if they're not even calling it Yahweh. Oh, he's weird. He's different. It's the glory of God that should shine upon you. It should exude out of your very skin. Your walk should be, should be transformed. Your talk, you, you should walk with a new cadence, talk with a new rhythm. Everything about you should change just for you being in the, in the presence of Yahweh. Amen. Amen. So our conduct is important. What we say. Even when we are wronged, admitting to our faults, how we respond to good deeds and bad deeds matters. God is not predicated to respond because they offended you. 
God is going to move by your response. Yeah, I saw they did this. I'm not moving yet. Let me see what you do first. Then I'll move. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. If you've already handled it, I've taken my hands off of it. It's handled already. And you've won the fight. You won the argument and lost a soul, lost a friend, lost a family member because you just had to win. You just had to be correct. I got tired of losing friends. I got tired of putting a relationship in jeopardy because I had to win an argument. I had to say my piece. And I got the belt of the argument and missed out on the relationship, missed out on the person. So I won, but I lost. Bad. You got the belt. You won the fight. Congratulations. And nothing to show for it. Absolutely nothing. You prove your point. You got to get tired of winning. You got to get tired of trying to get the belt. I'm trying to reach you, man. I'm not about to go back and forth with you. I'm trying to reach you right now. You pushing it. Yeah, you trying it. You, got, you caught me on a bad day. It's the fall, too. Nah. <laughs> the sun going down early. I like sunlight. <laughs> you caught me on a bad day. But guess what, man? I love you. I don't want to lose our relationship. I don't want to lose our friendship. I don't want to lose our brotherhood. Hey, man, I understand you offended me. I felt some kind of way about it. Hey, man, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I was wrong. One last quick story. I remember some years back I was working with a client. Uh, I, I'm into music or whatever. I was working with a client with an artist, a very talented guy. And... Uh, we had done a couple of records together. We had been working for a long time. And he came out and said, Aaron, I want to do a live recording, but I'm thinking about going a different direction uh, outside of you. A long story short, he had picked a friend of mine to do the record instead. I said, you know, I told him, I said, yeah, man, it's all good. It's all, it's all gravy. I'm, I'm cool about it. Don't worry about it. You know, we'll just throw it under the rug. I felt some kind of way. I was hurt. I felt betrayed. The concert came up. I went there. Uh, and I tell him I, I would support. I was there. Uh, concert ended. I sent a text to both of the producer and the artist. Hey, man, congratulations to you guys. I'm proud of you. Oh, damn, and I hope everything goes well. Not even two weeks, the Holy Spirit convicted me. You know why you went to that concert. <laughs> you know you didn't go there to genuinely support. You know what I'm about to ask you to do, right? Okay, God, I repent. I'm sorry. No, I need you to send a text, and I need you to let them know why you were there. I said, no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> he said, you went to watch it fail. You went for it to not be a success. You went to watch it crumble, and it didn't. I said, God, they don't know why I went. It doesn't matter. You know, and you need to apologize. The hardest text I've ever had to send in my life. I sent a lot of texts. <laughs> and I said, hey, man, I'm sorry. I was sending them both, them both. I'm sorry. I went to the concert to watch it crumble. And I apologize for that. I was wrong. I was there under bad intentions. I was there for the wrong reasons. And they took it cool. They took it over us. And I asked the Holy Spirit, God, why did you make me do that? They would have never known. They would have never known why I was there. He said, it wasn't about them. Because had I not make you, have I not convicted you to the point of confession, that spirit would have festered. That spirit would have mustered up. The spirit of envy and jealousy and vindictiveness. Most, most of our deliverance can come through just mere confession. Just like corrosion on a battery. If you never lift the hood... Corrosion will build. If you never reveal it, you'll never see it. And had I not revealed that, it would have festered and become something else. Confession is important. Conduct is important. Apologies are important. This is how we exude the evidence of the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit beats me up over the smallest things. God, leave me alone. Are you, you, you must be bored. <laughs> you have nothing else better to do with your time. <laughs> he made me apologize. He made me ask for forgiveness. And when I tell you, I felt so liberated, so free. It felt uncomfortable. But I, there was such a weight. I said, oh, my. I didn't realize it was there until I confessed it. What confessions are we sitting on? What apologies are we sitting on? Discernment is very important, but I'm a firm believer that discernment is more so for the inner man. Father, help me to discern my own intentions. Help me to seek the spirit about my own life. Because I was willing to bury it. I was willing to let it go. And the Holy Spirit would not let me up all night, could not eat. Ask them for forgiveness because that was evil. It wasn't loud. It wasn't outspoken. I didn't make a scene. And that's what made it even more creepy because it was silent and it was subtle and it was under the table. undetected, would have never known. I don't know where their spirituality is or how deep their discernment is. It didn't matter. I knew why I was there. And this is where we miss the enemy because we don't recognize it in our own selves. God, I want to recognize my own downfalls before I recognize somebody else's. I want to discern my own life, my own shortcomings before I beat up the next man. I'm off topic. Okay. I'm, uh... So this is, our, this is how we conduct ourselves as believers. I don't want to write a time. I'm going to my last point. So we recognize, have a, so we're talking about just reviewing having the Holy Spirit and exuding in our lives in ways beyond just the spiritual gifts, right? Communication, how we behave ourselves, the conduct and forgiveness, doing the everyday things. Now we're talking about the fruit and forgiveness by fruit by way of giving and sowing. And my last point. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I've exuded fruit by what I say. I exuded the fruit of the Holy Spirit by how I act. Now I gotta talk with my pocket. I gotta exude it with my generosity, my giving, my time, my investments. Are you generous? Can you discern the need before you discern the sin? I see a need. And instead of talking to the next man about it, yeah, I pick it up in the spirit. I'm not going to go to some. I'm going to go to the, hey, man, I'm not sure if I'm not trying to offend you anything, but the Holy Spirit is leading me to talk to you about such and such. He's leading me to give you such and such. I don't know what your situation is. This is what I'm led to do. It's not much, but I see it, and I don't want to throw it under the table. Generosity. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. That goes beyond just tithes and offering. Seed sowing. Sowing seeds. It's a, man, I'm learning myself. It's a powerful weapon. Sowing is so powerful. Sowing expedites things in the spiritual realm. If you're looking for something, if you're looking for something to come forth in your life, in a fast way, give something out of your pocket to somebody who might need, even if they don't even need it, even if they got more money than you. Give it. It'll expedite something, even, almost even more so than prayer. Prayer as well, fasting, but sowing, giving it up. You'll see the return. Stop putting people in position to ask for things. Take initiative. If it's not money, hey, man, let's go out to lunch. I noticed it got kind of shaky between us. Let me treat you to breakfast after service. I got some things I need to confess. No, it's on me. I got it. I'll pay for it. Don't worry about it. And it's, you ain't trying to stunt. You ain't trying to show off. You're not trying to do any of that. But just, you're just exuding love, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let me help you, help you out with such and such, even if it's not money, time. Can I help you with something? Do you need me to help you move? I know you, you're starting a business. Can I help you with in that area? What can I do? 
the food bag is open. I've been tripping on that. I got to get back to that. Let me help you guys out with that. I know it's only an hour or two. I got time. Let me sow a seed of time. I'm not too busy. I got other things to do, but let me do this instead. Um, I can pray for people while they're in line. It's the least I can do. Exuding the fruit of the Holy Spirit through our giving, through seed sowing. It's important. God wants us to exude the presence of the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives. It's great to have the spiritual technologies. I'm wrapping up. It's great to have the spiritual technologies. It's important to be able to have discernment and to prophesy. But God, I want to experience you. I want people to experience me beyond just the technologies, beyond just the, the, the spooky stuff. I want to leave a lasting impression. I want to leave a, a, a thumbprint on their souls, on their hearts, that they will remember for the rest of their lives. They may not ever come to a church. They may not ever crack open the Bible, but they will experience me. I might get hated for it. I might get ridiculed for it. But the, Yeshua said in the, the Newer Testament, he said, I know that they hate you, but understand that they hated me first. And because you carry my cross, because you carry my name, you are therefore already subject to slander, subject to persecution. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're going to get afflicted simply because you are righteous and nothing else. You haven't said anything to anybody yet. And when you're in your new walk, you haven't done anything. You are righteous. Therefore, that makes you prone to attack. Be ready. Because you are righteous. It is non-negotiable. But even with these afflictions, even with the slander, even with the bullying, I might get mistreated. I might get stepped on. But, Father, I've chosen this walk for your glory. I've chosen this walk to the, for the betterment of my life. It feels bad, but it feels it's bad to me, but if I'm walking lighter, my skin looks better, I'm talking better, I live better, I breathe better, everything about me is different. And I'll ch and I will choose that a million times over before I ever go back to my old way. I was getting bullied up and messed up then. I was getting walked on in. At least now I have a covering, at least a backing. Now I can't, now I can't, I might be touched, but now my spirit can't be touched. I can't be afflicted now. I have a new understanding. I'm different now. I was already struggling before, but now I'm not struggling alone. I'm not struggling by myself. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm not struggling alone now. I have a cross with me. I have something to represent outside of myself. I'm thankful, Father, for your spirit. I'm thankful it's not limited to the technologies, but it can be revealed out of my wallet, out of my speech, out of my walk, out of my conduct. It could be revealed in more ways than one. I ain't got to speak in tongues for God, for God to be seen in me. I don't have to prophesy to be heard. I don't have to have a rhema word to minister. I can minister through my everyday walk. I don't need a license. I just need a lifestyle. I'm grateful for it. I hope this word was a blessing to you. I hate that it.
I don't want us to forget the everyday. I'm glad we got this right. Out there is waiting on us. They're looking for us. They're looking for God. And it's, it may not be inside of here. And it is. The Bible says, write the word on the tables of your heart. That it may come out of our speech and our everyday living. Are there any prayer requests on today? Stand our feet. Also, the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me for pandemic recovery. I think we kind of threw that under the rug. There's, there are people who've been experiencing things during the pandemic. You know, we was locked behind closed doors like a year and a half, two years. Certain habits were developed, unhealthy habits, and perhaps unhealthy lifestyles, loneliness, depression. These things came to be or blossomed during that time so we're going to present that in prayer right now father we thank you for this morning father we thank you for having us here we thank you for this moment father we come to you now present these prayer requests to you father we thank you for your word god we thank you for your presence we thank you for your anointing father we ask father that the prayer request that we present to you for our families and for uh just uh for blessings of healing father will sprout upon us father that you will Throw these things upon us, Father, in our everyday lives. Father, we come against every uh, ailment, Father, Father uh, every um, sickness, every all sorts of disease, Father. Father, we just ask that you would just uh, allow your word to cover these things in Jesus' name. Allow your spirit to cover us, Father. Allow us to lay hands on ourselves to um, activate these gifts of healing. Father, we, we pray, Lord God, that just you will cover us under your precious blood that you allow our bodies to line up with the word of God, that we will receive healing in our own lives, Father, not just through prayer, not just through the word, but, Father, in our own lives and our own relationships with you. Help these sicknesses and these ailments draw us closer, Father, and push us further into your presence, Father. For you said in your presence there is fullness of joy, Lord God, and pleasures forevermore. We have everything that we need in your presence. Everything that we need, Lord God, comes by your spirit. Father, if it's depression that, Lord God, that we feel, we just ask you just bring comfort, if it's healing that we need, Father, we just ask, Lord God, you just bring deliverance and make us whole again. Father, help us, Lord God, to be healed. Help us to be set free. Help us to be delivered. Help us to be good stewards over this word, Father. Help us to be good stewards over each other, to lay hands over each other, Father, to forgive one another, to come back sickness, Lord God, with conversations, Lord God, and with admissions of fault, Father that these ailments will be lifted upon us, Lord God, not just through medicine, not just through medication or through doctoral visits, Father, or just medicine, Father, but just by confessing, hey, forgive me, I'm sorry, that we may be healed, that we may, that our bodies will then line up. Remove every weight off of our chest, Father. Remove every weight, Lord God, off of our lungs and 
off of our mouths and off of our bodies, Lord, that our bodies, physical bodies will be free. And that we will, they will line up, Lord God, with the freedom of the Holy Spirit, Father. You said where the Spirit of the Lord is, Father, there is liberty, that we are set free. Father, we declare healing in this atmosphere, Father. We declare deliverance in this atmosphere, Father. Saturate this place, Lord God. Even if we're interceding for somebody else, help them to receive, Lord God, the healing that they need by the prayers of somebody else. Help them to not give up, Father. Help them to press into your word. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the higher calling that is in Yeshua Christ Jesus. So, we, Father, we pray on their behalf that they will continue to push, that will continue to lean forward into your word, lean forward into your spirit. Make declarations, Father. Make confessions to you of healing, of, of prosperity, Lord God, and deliverance. We love you, God, and we honor you on this morning. Now, God, I ask that you, we would take this word and we would apply it to our everyday lives. Our Father, we pray that we apply these, this word to our families, Father, to the people that are closest to us. It's the people that are closest to us that this word is for. It's the people that are closest to us that hurt us the most. So we pray, Lord, we apply, we apply peace and we apply mercy and meekness and humility and self-control towards our family members, towards our spouses, towards our children, towards our co-workers, towards our church members, everywhere that we go, even to our own selves, to our fathers and to our mothers that we need to make phone calls to. Help us to be ready for the uncomfortable conversations, for the uncomfortable encounters, for the decade-long aughts that we've had against one another, for the five, year, uh, five years' worth of aggression, for the five years' worth of bitterness that we didn't address that's coming out in our speech, that's, co that's causing us to cut down one another. We ask that we address it in a healthy way, in a righteous way, Father. Father, you say when two agree or gather in your name, you will be there for being in the midst. We thank you, Father, you are, in, you are in the midst of us. And, Father, we know we have everything that we need because of it. We thank you, Yahshua. We ask that you cover us on your precious blood for the rest of the days, for, this, for the rest of this week, and for the rest of our lives. Bring, he, bring blessings of healing, gifts of healing, and deliverance in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. What an awesome word on this Hallelujah. Lord's day. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Yahweh. Glory. We truly thank Yahweh. Hallelujah for that word on this day. I know you may have had a good meal for Thanksgiving, but I'm telling you this word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm-mm-mm. Hallelujah. We praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. And we praise Yahweh for all that he's doing. And we thank you, Brother Aaron Carnish, for allowing Yahweh to use you mightily on this day. We thank Yahweh for the gifts in operation through you. And the anointing that's upon your life. We give Yahweh praise. Um, at this time, we have tithes and offering. And those that are watching, we just want to say thank you for tuning in. You're free to give if you would like to give, and it's to Cash App if you have Cash App. Give to Cash App, dollar sign, uh, capital Temple, capital of, and capital Y for Yahshua. The mail, if you choose to mail it, is P.O. Box 9144, Columbia, South Carolina, 29290. Thank you for viewing us and joining our services on today, and may Yahweh continue to richly bless you in every area of your life. In the name of Yahshua, be blessed.